The first commandment in the Bible, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not worship any God before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not worship anything in the heaven above, in the sea below, on the surface of the earth. Thou shalt not worship any images. But the Lord your God is a jealous God. Today we find people worshiping creations. They worship humans. They worship woods. They worship, they bow down to certain things. This is it. This is the, this is the theme. Of all the prophets sure. because of the miraculous power of God and it was also a testimony of the living God just like this book just like the ark just like the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant also contained the Ten Commandments which are also a testimony of the righteousness of God could any of these things save the people no not only is the ark a type or a symbol of Salahum Taamun in Lamin Bari, Laius Minu, Ala Yuni Minju, Ujo Huyoma Idin Naima, Lisai Haradia, Fijan Natin Alia, Latas Mafi Halaria, Fiha Ainun Jaria, Fiha Surum Marfua, Wakuabum Mordua, Wanamariko Masfufa, Wazarabi Yumabithusa. أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم Forgive me for my pronunciations I'm not one of the best reciters Assalamu uh, alaikum and when translated in English it means peace be upon you I use this assalamu alaikum because this is according to the Islamic religion this is the greatest of Moses, Abraham, Isaiah, Nehemiah, and all of them say assalamu alaikum. In Arabic, assalamu alaikum. In Hebrew, shalom alaikum. So in actuality, it's the same thing. Uh, my name is Ahmed Muhammad. Um, I'm a resident of uh, Seattle, inshallah. And I'm a da'i. Da'i means I'm, you know, a person who invites into Islam. And I just briefly met Mr. Leon gentleman, very humble, very soft-spoken, very understanding. And this is the kind of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have already mentioned in the Quran that we have to speak with. The Quran mentioned the quality of a person like uh, Brother Leon. When Allah said, وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَكْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَلَّذِينَ كَعَلُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ وَرُخُبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ the nearest in love, all Muslims, the nearest to you, all Muslims, in love to the men of the old world world, are those who call themselves the Christians. This is because these are people who are not arrogant, people who are humble, who have renounced the world. So I'm very glad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have seen fit to give us this opportunity. Inshallah, the topic as it was announced, the origin of Islam and the origin of Christianity. Inshallah, we shall do justice to this uh, topic, which I know many Muslims and Christians are looking forward to, you know, bridge the gap. So Inshallah, I will stop here until when it's time for me to do my service. Inshallah, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Picked up this information from a book outside of the Bible. It's called The Bible Through the Ages. It's published by Reader's Digest, 1989 version. And this book is a grouping of several scholars who are either affiliated with, not, with Reader's Digest or not affiliated. Most importantly, or I should say most of them are affiliated with colleges and universities throughout the world, uh, in America and outside of America. And this is what they have to say. And as well, you can find this book in any one of your local libraries here in Seattle. It states that based on their research, the unity of the scriptures is one of the most remarkable in the sense that the books were written over a period of at least 1,200 years. 
by a large number of diverse authors in several languages, mainly Hebrew, Aramaic, and in the Greek. Hebrew and Aramaic in the Old Testament, Greek in the New Testament. All the books bear witness fundamentally to the same understanding of the nature of God, mainly that God is a God who acts, God is a God who redeems, God is one who gives hope. They go on to further state that the Old Testament can be regarded as the preparation of the gospel of Christ. The four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, can be regarded as the manifestation or they acknowledge testimony of these disciples who later became apostles. And in their testimony, they are giving their story and their account of the manifestation of the gospel of Christ. As well, the book of Acts of the apostle narrates the early propagation, 5th and the 2nd century B.C., and then it goes on to talk about the latter part, which is the writings, which were established, I think, shortly after that, where they would have been the last writings that would have been established in the canon. But basically, you get the basic point I'm making, is that there was some kind of a scholarly study, and there have been findings unearthed from archaeologists who have found various uh, scripture in its original form, so that what you and I now have in a Bible form, a book form, through the process of time, the establishment of cuneiform and various other written languages all the way up until today with the printing press and the process in which that had to undertake, as well as many other historical events, have led to what you and I now have access to, which we call the Bible or the book in this form. When you look at the book, the book is very much an example of supernatural origin in that it was inspired. Timothy says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All biblical Bible scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof or doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the person of God, the man of God, will be perfect or mature, in other words, lacking nothing. So therefore, this is what I'd like to put forth to you today. According to Genesis chapter 1, we can see when we look at the book that God created all that has been created. All that can be created, God created it. The heavens and the earth, it says in chapter 1. Chapter 2, it introduces the fact that there is one who is called Lord God. Chapter 2. I want to read that to you. But I want to start with verse 1. Chapter 1, excuse me. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was Anything on Anything else they did by faith what God told them to do. This is what the testimony is giving us an account of. And it says, according to Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, it came to pass that when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And this person said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Many people misuse that scripture and think that that is someone else speaking about the Lord. But again, remember what I said earlier, that the word Lord is translated as Jehovah. And since Elohim is speaking not of an individual, but of plural of a class, of individuals that have the same essence of Godhood. Lord can speak of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit synonymously, individually, and at any time. And when you look at the Old Testament scripture, you'll see that whenever the word or the title God is used, we don't know, for example, unless it is specifically noted, which one is specifically noted. 
So it could be all three speaking in certain instances. It could be one. We don't know. And it is purposely done that way. The Old Testament acknowledges that Christ also shows himself to Moses out of the burning bush and as well acknowledges himself as I am. And I must note as well that along with Moses and along with all of the prophets, all of these individuals that have a desire to believe and obey the living God, the living God, their names were either changed or somehow their names because of their faith to some extent or another meant something involving God. And I will acknowledge this and then I'm finished. Joshua's name is also rendered and means Hoshea, originally meaning salvation, but his name was changed by Moses according to the record in Numbers chapter 13 to be called Yehoshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation. In a shortened version, it is Yeshua. This is also one of the Hebrew or divine names that were given by the Hebrew people of the living God. This is also equivalent to the Greek Issus. In the Greek, Issus is Jesus' name. We use the J, the Latin uses the J, and so that's how we have the name Jesus. But they all mean the same thing, the Lord that saves. As I close, I'll turn over to my brother here so he can make his presentation. Thank you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa kul jaa al-haq wa zahaq al-baatil inna al-baatil kaana zahuka. Wa nazir min al-Qur'an ma huwa shifa'un wa rahamatun lil-mu'mineen wa la yazid al-zalimeen illa khasara. قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم الله نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله إن تولوا فقولوا شهدوا بأننا مسلم say oh people of the book come let us have a common talk between us and you is what the Quran said in the common talk Allah said the Quran is we worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is his name, Allah, I will explain. Wala nushurika bihi shay'an. We don't associate any partners in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't take anyone who is like a lord or patron to worship him towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his knowledge. And if you tell them all these things, Muhammad, and if they still refuse, tell them, waqulu shahadu bi anna muslim. You have at least surrendered your will to the one and only God Almighty that deserves to be worshipped. Coming back to the topic, the origin of Islam and the origin of Christianity. I'm going to be speaking on the origin of Islam and Christianity all together as I go. On the standpoint of Islam, we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one that originates the religion of Islam. As we have in the Quran, Allah said, Inna dini in the lakil Islam, woman yaptagi gayral Islam adinan, falan yukbala minhu, wa huwa fil akhira min al khasirin. The religion before Allah, Allah said this in the Quran, the revelation. The religion before me, Allah, is Islam, submission to only my will. Whosoever comes on the day of judgment with any religion other than Islam, I, Allah, I will not accept it from him. Again, we find in the Quran, God Almighty is talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa telling him to follow the footstep of Ibrahim. Because Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of, we all follow the path of Ibrahim. So Allah said in Muhammad, follow thou the footstep of Ibrahim. He is not among those who associate partnered with Allah. Then it continues. Quran also said, Ma kana Ibrahiman Yahudiyan wala Nasraniyan wala kin kana Hanifan Muslim. Ibrahim is not, was not a Christian, nor was he a Jew. Ma kana Ibrahim Yahudiyan, he's not a Yehuda, Yehud. Wala Nasraniyan, he's not from Nasara, meaning Christians. Walakin kana Hanifan Muslim, 
but he is a person who is upright person Muslim in this context Islam or Muslim means one who consciously submit his will to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me venture here by using the word Allah I'm going to explain because I'm going to be using the word Allah as I go in Allah is what we call God we have Arab Christians today who live in the midst of Arabs in the Arab world in their Bible is Allah Allah is the generic name for the one and only God Almighty the Arab Christians never use any other name to call Allah but they use the word Allah Allah is the name of God Almighty the name that Jesus and Moses and Abraham used Abraham did not speak English nor did Jesus spoke English we don't you don't expect I don't expect you to tell me that Moses spoke English or Chinese he spoke Aramaic or Hebrew Jesus spoke Aramaic Aramaic is a colloquial of Hebrew coming from the Palestine how do you say uh, uh, God how do they call their one and only God in the language of Hebrew the Moses language the Jesus language it depends on the 12 nations Jacob have 12 children and each and every one of them became a nation so each and every one have their own way of calling God God so some call him Eloi some call him Eli some call him Allah and on and on and on and Muhammad called him Allah because this is Semitic language actually Jesus called God Almighty Allah if you check in the Scofield dictionary you will find this and if you check in the encyclopedia Vaticanos page 105 the second paragraph he called Jesus he, Jesus, he called God Allah and Muhammad said Allah and if you are a Jewish and you want to accept Judaism the first thing they tell you they have their Kalima Shahada testimony you have to say Shima Israela Adonai Elahun Adonai Ehud this is Hebrew meaning hear O Israel hear Shima O Israel Adonai Elahun the Lord our God Elahun Adonai Ehud is one in, in Islam the same thing Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah Muhammad said Qul huwa Allahu ahad Aduna ilahun, aduna ikhud. Moses say ikhud, Muhammad say ahad. So the name of God Almighty, you see in Hebrew and Arabic, these are sister language. The Hebrew said shalom, it means salam in Arabic, meaning peace. The Hebrew said navim, the Arab said nabir, meaning a prophet. The Hebrew said kutub, meaning book in Arabic, meaning kitab. The Hebrew said ruhi, in Arabic ruh, Hebrew and Arabic sister language but the painful part of this discussion is this that all the books that we have today is preserved in English it's not even preserved in the original language Jesus spoke Hebrew but all the is lecturing as he lived on earth for three years everything else was preserved in Greek not only the classical Greek it was preserved I read most of her works she mentioned she said by far contrast Ellen G. Wells says by far contrast as we have learned from the early hood of Muhammad he is by no means an unlettered prophet for him to have brought such a magnitude book and for it to become one of the most powerful religion fighting with Christianity is a miracle indeed and that is the only miracle Muhammad claimed this is what she said Ellen G. White this is what she said so in other words they are confirming what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said in the Quran the Quran is not the product of Muhammad not him not anyone around him this man is unlettered and the fact that Muhammad is unlettered can be traced into the Bible itself you see if you look in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12 it reads about the first revelation that came to Muhammad when he was in the in the in the Mount of Light on the mountain the angel came to him angel Gabriel he said Ikra ya Muhammad Muhammad said Ma ana I am not learned the angel said Ikra read oh Muhammad Muhammad said I am not learned the third time the angel said Ikra read in the name of the Lord who created you created you from a congeal of blood read for your name for your Lord is magnified he who teach man that which he does not know right away the spirit was transferred into the heart of Muhammad so Muhammad he realized in Arabic Ikra means to read 
to recite, to proclaim, to say, to repeat. It makes all the senses. So the angel said, Ikra, Muhammad say, Ikra. Bismillah Rabbi Kalazi, Bismillah Rabbi. So the angel transferred the words to Muhammad, mouth for mouth, word for word. And Muhammad repeated exactly what the angel said to him. Now this prophecy can also be found in the Bible. Book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. It reads, And the book was given to him who is not learned. And they asked him to read, and he said, I am not learned. So we asked a question. Was there a time, was there a time from Adam to Muhammad that a book was given to somebody who is a prophet, they asked him to read, and he said, he is not learned? Was there a time? There wasn't any time. There wasn't a time at all that angel came to a prophet and said, read this book. And he said, I am not learned. So Islam have its origin from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have Mohammedanism, but we have Judaism. What is Judaism? It's just the name of somebody, Judah. Jacob, one of the sons of Jacob, Judah. Judea, those, you know, Ju Judah, those who come from the, Ju you know, the Judean peninsula. People call them Judah, it became Judah. Christian, those who follow Christ. This is earthly name. Buddha is Buddha. He is Buddha never met, as I read the Bhagavad Gita from cover to cover, there is not a single phrase from the lips of Ju Buddha that he is a prophet of God, that he is deserved to be worshipped. Buddha only called himself a teacher. He called himself a reformer. But later generation, they change the words and they call him a God. They make a statue of him. The first commandment in the Bible, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not worship any God before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not worship anything in the heaven above, in the sea below, on the surface of the earth. Thou shalt not worship any images. But the Lord your God is a jealous God. Today we find people worshiping creations. They worship humans. They worship woods. They worship they bow down to certain things. This is it. This is the, this is the theme of all the prophets. Shun from any worshipping one God. That's it. No intermediary. This is what Jesus spoke. This is what Moses said. This is what Abraham said. This is what Muhammad said. Worshipping one and only God. So if you want to know the true religion, the origin of religion, look at the origin. Look at where did this thing came from. If I'm learning the Bible, I'm not going to go ask Christians, look, are you a Mormon? Are you Angle? I go to the book straight. The book, the source. Then I study. So if you want to know about Islam, get the book. Once you read it, you will see. But the media have made it. Is it time? It's my time? Okay, so <laughs> this is it. Islam is not a religion for Muhammad. Islam is a religion that God Almighty instituted. Talking about the 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 you know the gradation. What are the custom of 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 a religion? If you want to know, look at the custom of a religion. For the simple fact that Muhammad came in the fourteenth in the seventh century, there is not a single word that is so repulsive or mythical or superstitious word in the Quran. Amazing. One of the miracles of the Quran is the fact that there is not a single mythology, a single nonsensical in the book. It's not in there. If there is, I want to see it today. There isn't. And Muhammad is unlettered. This is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The religion of God Almighty. Look what we are. There's too much heat, tension against Islam, but yet the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth. Why? The name of the book that he wrote in 1898 is Heroes and Hero Worship. And in that book, he said, The lie and the zeal that has been heaped upon the man Muhammad is a disgrace to us alone. This man, unlettered prophet, a desert, perhaps smelling goats, unlettered barbarian from the desert, far removed from civilization, will come out with a religion, and this religion will eventually to be one of the most important religions on the face of the earth. This is the miracle. He said, if he is allowed to worship a human being, he will worship Muhammad. But Islam doesn't allow that. And Thomas Kala said, the disciples of Muhammad were waiting for Muhammad to say, I am God, and they will worship him. They were waiting for Muhammad to say, I am God, they will worship him. Just looking at the man. Humility. The same thing applies to all the prophets. None of them claim to be God. Jesus never claimed to be God. Therefore, the origin of people who... The concept of Trinity, this concept of Trinity, 
the only verse that can be found in the gospel is the first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 7 for there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the Holy Spirit and these three are one but I'm telling you in the new international Christian missionaries are debating the ecumenical council are debating that these words are the word of a Greek philosopher by the name Philo as he was reading a book, you know, at the marginal note, he was writing something. Eventually, this word, which is a, a Neoplatonic Greek mythology, eventually crept into the main text and it became part of Christianity. But now they have taken it. It's no more in the latest Bible that they have today. Trinity. The word Trinity was instituted in the year 325 AD after Jesus left the earth Jesus never mentioned the word Trinity as a matter of fact the word Trinity is not in the Bible the word Trinity is not in the Bible at all he wants but the word Trinity is in the Quran <laughs> the Quran said don't say Trinity it will be better for you this is stop for the Lord thy God is one one God. This is the word God of Moses. The Jewish never have any idea of Trinity in them at all. Long before Jesus was born, in the Babylonian concept, they have Trinity. In, in the Egyptian concept, about 2,515 exact years before Jesus was born, the Egyptians worship Horus, Iris, and Horus, Iris and Isis. Hindus, five thousand, the oldest religion on the face of the earth is the, 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 the Hinduism. Five thousand years before Christ, they worship three gods: Shiva, Vishnu, and Rahma. These are the gods that they worship with three faces, but they try. They call it Trimutri, Trimutri. And if you say, "Where did I get this?" Read the Book of Gibbon. Read the history of Christianity by T. W. Dawn. T. W. Dawn, Reverend T. W. Dawn, the history of Christianity. Again, you see all this information. Go to the library, log in the history, you see all this thing. This is a pagan concept, concept that crept into the religion. Because Jesus said, Don't do that. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, Jesus said to the disciples, Do not go into any way of the Gentiles, nor any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the Gentiles? You and I. In Hebrew, Gentile means goy. Goy means unclean, napatwa, unclean, uncircumcised persons. Don't go there, Jesus said. Don't go there. Don't go there. All of us here are Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. I come to Jesus. Don't go to them. Who are the Samaritans? The Samaritans are half-baked Jewish. Their father is not a Jew. It's a Jew. And their mother is not. They are half-Jew. Jesus said, don't. rather unto the Lord's sheep. I am sent only to the I, These are not my words. But later, they said, the great commandments, go ye into all the nations. This nation is referring to the nation of Israel. The 12 nations. But it was squeezed in to make it fit in the world. So when Paul took the religion of Jesus to the pagans, they go to worship on Sunday. S-U-N, sun, not S-O-N. They worship on Sunday. Which God? They worship the sun God Mithrai. The sun god Apollo, the sun god Herculu, the sun god Madonna. This is the, these are the gods that they worship. So Paul entered in on Saturday. Saturday, the seventh day, Sabbath day. This is the day that the Jewish Jesus and disciple go to the temple. How look, the Protestants. Today we have two different Bibles. The Bible of the Protestant is 66 books. And the Catholic have 73 books. Because they have taken seven books out. They say this is apocrypha. Means doubtful origin. They inculcate it. But the Protestants say no. Martin Luther of Wattenberg in Germany. He was the first to protest against the vested interest in Rome. Because the Romans have made the religion a national religion. They don't allow interpretation. Only them. Martin Luther said no. 
he protested. Those who followed him, they became protestants. You wonder how they called them protestants. They protested. And then they came out with New International Edition. And then the Presbyterians. The word presbytos in Greek means old people. During the time of the fighting between Bible and this and that, they are old. They say, you know what? We don't want to get trampled. We are old, so we want to gather here and learn. So they gather themselves and they learn the Bible. They became presbyters, Presbyterians. And then the Methodists rise up and say, woo. Methodists. And then each and everybody. So they have, everybody have their own. Book. But the King James... The English people later on in the year 1611, by King, King James I, he gave the authorization that the Bible should be written to follow their tradition. And so they write King James Version of the Bible in the year 1611. Why the Bible according to King James? Why King James? Why do you write a book and you say the, re, revise the King James Version? Why King James Version? If it is from God, why do you say King James Version? And if you have the King James Version in the third edition on the preface, it reads, The King James Version of the Bible has so many grave defects, and these defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision. This the Bible is in the Bible today. The King James Version of the Bible has so many grave you know what is grave defects? You know, like I'm coming from the east, you come from the west, we crash. Scatter grave defects, defects, and so serious. <laughs> These defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision. So you have to revise it in the year 1952. So if we have to go back to the ancient manuscript, the Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandrius, and Codex Sinaiticus, these are the ancient, three ancient main ancient manuscripts of which we have the New and the Old Testament inside of it. Paul inserted so many dogmas that are contrary to the law of Jesus. He canceled the law of Moses and Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophet. No, I have not come to destroy. I have come to fulfill. Heaven and earth shall pass, but a dot from the law shall Book shall be called least. In other words, you go to the hellfire. And whosoever do the law shall be called great. But today we have people canceling the law. They write their Bible at their own will. Everybody's writing his own, canceling the law. And the last book of the Revelation said, Whosoever take away from this book, may the plague of God be upon him. People are putting in inside it. They believe in miracle now. Miracle is only a test. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 24, he said, for there shall arise many false prophets and false Christs who will show you many great wonders and signs if it were possible to deceive the very elect. My own disciple will be deceived from miracle. Miracle is not a test. It was only given to God Almighty to the prophets so that they could do it and people would know that they came from God. So if David Copperfield lived in 2,000 years ago or Ziegfeld and Freud, these guys who do magic, if they lived 2,000 years back, they would become gods. Believe me, they would, people will worship them. Because I was in New York when David Copperfield came and he made the start of liberty dis disappear. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was skeptical. I was watching it, but it's gone. So if it, imagine 2,000 years ago, people would believe him and they would worship him. So Jesus, he knew. He said, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus said, these people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine of men. Men like Paul, who canceled the law of Jesus. He never met Jesus. But he said he canceled the law of Jesus. So, for instance, I would like to stop here. I have so much to share, but I, have, I, will, I, will, I will stop here. So, during question and time, you could take me up and I will uh, explain further. From manna was bread from heaven to feed them when they were in the wilderness after they were set free from Egypt. Within that ark was also the rod that budded. The, the rod that God told specifically each of the elders of the 12 tribes to cut and to be given to them as a testimony of the living God. And Aaron's rod budded. In other words, the plant of that rod, whatever it was, a limb cut off of what type of tree? I think it was an almond tree. It flowered, but it was cut off. It flowered because of the miraculous power of God. And it was also a testimony of the living God, just like this book, just like the Ark, just like the Ark of the Covenant. 
The Ark of the Covenant also contained the Ten Commandments, which are also a testimony of the righteousness of God. Could any of these things save the people? No. Not only is the Ark a type or a symbol of the testimony of their experience with God as they traveled along, their different experiences are noted in scripture. This is the reason why the historical aspect of the scripture is giving you a chronological or step-by-step -step process of what they go through. Okay? So that you have a way, a uh, timeline, a way of seeing the origin of things, the origin of life, where it began, the origin of meeting God, the established. Let no one deceive you in thinking that these details are not important. People may misuse the details and manipulate them for their own purposes. Just like Cain manipulated the use of fruits and vegetables to make his own sacrifice to God in his own way. Because in his own mind, this is acceptable, I think, in my heart. This should be good enough. But it is not appropriate because it was not according to God. It was not according to Therefore, it was not accepted. It is not because the vegetables and fruits were not made by God. It is because it did not coincide with the sacrifice that would be given on our behalf. This is important. Don't believe every spirit that talks to you and tells you. Do the research for yourself. Because you will be accountable to the living God for yourself. Another thing that's important. Abraham was of Ur. Okay, he came out of the family of Shem, but he scholars and historians have found to be people of the Mesopotamian Valley, Sumerian, Akkadian, you name it, they were in that valley area. Abraham came out because God told him to leave them. Whatever worship form they had in Ur and in those regions, those early societies, Abraham was told to leave all of that. I will take you, God said, to a new land that I will give you. Along with that, they develop a Abraham, it is him that God calls Israel for a reason. Just like Joshua's name means Yahweh, Yeshua. Hoshia, the Lord saves. God is wise. These names and these people, because of their obedience, mean something. Believe not every spirit that talks to you. Every spirit is not of God. The other thing I want to show you is that if Adam and Noah did not need a shrine to have communion with God, and all they needed was a altar which was merely a pile of rock. They were traveling people. They had no time to build structures to live in or to worship in because they were people traveling to a place. So they did not build any shrines to worship the living God. Furthermore, there are no, as I understand it, by genealogical findings, any other shrines other than the one that you claim is the shrine of Allah which is in Mecca and on top of that long before Muhammad was born the Kaaba was used for many other things or any many other worshiping of other idols I should say long before Muhammad was born where did it come from who built it it has been told to me that Adam built one Abraham built another one this is not so. If you look. So, let's analyze this with 2 Timothy 3.16. What, what is there to be heed from? There's no correction. Nobody said, look, Judah, you did this, therefore, there was no correction. Righteousness is not righteousness. What is God teaching us? Prophet of God, the prophet are supposed to be the best of mankind. Again, the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 30. We find a lot, prophet Lot, prophet of God Almighty, having sex, moral, righteousness, and on and on. Where does it fit? 
Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, all the way. Read it. I'm telling you, if you are a man, if you are a man, physical man, if you read Ezekiel 23, your private part is going, before you finish the chapter, your private part is going to be very hard. I'm serious. Because he talk about it. I can't mention what is in the Bible. I cannot. I cannot read this to my daughter or to my wife or to my sister. I can't do that. But it's in the book of God Almighty. Where is the moral? So if we analyze 2 Timothy 3.16 where does this one fit? They have to explain it to me. Love. Okay, I think I have John. Okay, we say they say Jesus have power. Lazarus. They say he walked on water. I say he did not walk in water. They said he fed Papa with five bread and tis bread. I said he didn't do it. They say, I say, show me. Then they show me. I say, okay, fine. In return, let's ask him if he is God. John chapter 5, verse 30. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. The way I hear, I judge. And my judgment is right because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. John chapter 18, verse 48. We read, Jesus said, I by the power of God cast I devil. Even as I raise the dead, it is the power of God that I do with it. I can of... Oh, he crying, telling you, my father is greater than I. Matthew 19, 16. The man came to Jesus. He said, good master, what good thing must I do you know, to go to heaven? I'm, I'm glad that I've seen you. Alhamdulillah, praise the Lord. You are the man telling me, how can I go to heaven? He said, good master, what good thing must I do to enter heaven? Jesus said, why do you call me good for? Don't start elevating me. Why does thou call me good for? The only one that is good, my brother, is the Father in heaven. But Humility. God is all good. Even goodness. Jesus rejects goodness because of humility. Look at Jesus. The way he dressed. Look at the way he walked. Humility. What makes him God? They say he raised Lazarus. I say, let's ask him. Did he? he say yes. Where? Book of John. Chapter 11. All the way. The whole chapter 11. Talking about Jesus. What happened was this. Jesus was not in the neighborhood. He was somewhere to preach and do whatever. So... Before he came, Lazarus was dead for four days, buried in the tomb. So when he came to the town after four days, Martha, the sister of Lazarus, heard that the master is in town. She ran to him and she said, Master, if you are here, you would have risen Lazarus, your friend. You keep going and raising every Tom, Dick and Harry. Your friend Lazarus, you would have risen him. And Jesus said, Martha, if you have faith, you will see the glory of God. Where have you laid him? Let's go. So along the way going to the sepulchre is a carved out roomy chamber which they bury human beings at that time and they put you know, a big stone at the mouth of it. On their way going, the Bible said, and Jesus groaned in the spirit. What is groan the spirit? In other words, he is communing with God. Oh my God, give me the power. He was talking to God. The people who were there, they can understand this mystical transmission that he's doing with God. They said he groaned in the spirit. Yeah. If a child is crying, he says, Oh, John, what's wrong with you? He is groaning. He's saying something, but the words are not audible. So we say, He's groaning. So Jesus groaned in the spirit. Oh, my God, give me the power. Oh, my God, I'm oh, my Father. So God gave him the assurance. He said, Is that what you want? He says, Salisa kumli Lazarus. Get up, Lazarus. And Lazarus, get up. And somebody was there. The man said, Glory unto God for giving such power unto men. People were like, Oh my God, Jesus is God. This, oh my God, he's God. And so he realized. Then he said, He raised his hand to the heaven. And he looked towards the heaven. And he said, Listen to what he said. He said, Oh my Father, I no doubt thou hearest me. And I no doubt thou hearest me always. But I said this loudly so that they may know, these superstitious people, they may know that thou have sent me, thou have sent me. Where did Jesus raise Lazarus? Nowhere. If I say put the light off, you put it off. Put it on. So, Jesus never said anything like that. He never said he is God. It was this, the, this is the idea, like I said, of the pagan ideas. That they worship him 
and they still worship him and he's keep telling them on that day many will come to me saying lord lord and i will tell them get away from you i never know you you who work for nothing jesus never convert a non-jew he never spoke to a single non-jew as he walk on earth he never spoke to anybody he never convert anybody into his religion why he himself handpicked the 12th tribe of Israel, 12 of them, to represent the 12th nation of Israel. So if he said, go into the nation and baptize them, which nation? The nation of Israel. He didn't, if he came for the whole of mankind, he would have. Look, this lady came to him. A lady, an Arab woman, Arab woman. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. This woman, the custom of the pagans, for they go into the bush and cut down tree and deck it with gold and silver and they fix it in their house. It represents nothing. It does not speak. But today, <laughs> in the New, New York, they have the biggest tree and they worship it. Why are you worshiping trees? Your Bible said, don't even cut it. It has been decked by the hand of the craftsman. But today is part and parcel of Christianity. Part and parcel of Christianity. I want somebody to show me one single thing that is repulsive that we do in Islam. That one, God is one. They say Muhammad copied for the Bible because he said it's one God. Oh, so if Moses came before Jesus, whatever Jesus said, 90% is from the Old Testament. Does it mean he copied from Moses too? Did Muhammad have to say God is four or three before you believe that he's actually a good person or he came from God Almighty? These are the same people. They transmute the same religion. Muhammad culminated it. My brother asked me, how come the time of Noah, there was no place of worship? I'm asking you, I'm counter asking another question. This building, before it was completed, Contractors, they were contracted this business to do the foundation. After they finish, the electricians were also contracted. After they finish, the boards, the people who put the woods, they were contracted. After they finish, then we have the air condition. After they finish, we have the painters. After they finish everything. So the last person that finished everything is maybe the person who put the light and it was beautiful, beautiful. All of them are the same. Muhammad, when he came to fulfill and complete the whole mission, Adam started out. People were in primitive ideas. Primitive ideas. Noah, when he came, people don't, people are primitive. All you have to do is, there is no God to worship, but one, the unseen God, and Noah is the messenger of God. That's all you have to say, and you will be saved. And then it came to Ezekiel, Nehemiah, Ezekiel, you know, up to Jesus, up to Moses, and then Muhammad, Muhammad, by the time Muhammad came, people, Yes, all you have to do is faith at that time. The beginning of everything, you don't expect them to be 100%. You don't go to school and start studying PhD all of a sudden. No, you started out with 1 plus 1, 2, you know, the X minus Y, because by the time you get to PhD level, you have graduated. So Muhammad is the culmination of all the same prophets. <coughs> the Quran said, وَلَكَدْ بَعَسْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ إِبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْقُودٍ we have from of old sent down messengers and the centrality of the worship is worship one God and shun from any abomination. Don't worship the stars. Don't worship the moon. Don't worship the human beings. Don't worship the teachers. Don't worship nothing. No wooden, no stone. Don't worship nothing. Not human being. Don't worship nothing but God Almighty. So if, if Jesus, according to the question being raised here, if he came from the seed of David, if we have to follow the genealogy of man, because now we know, according to science, that it is man that ejected the sperm that created a human being. Because man have two chromosomes, the X and the Y. The female have double X. So it's always the female, it's always the, uh, the man that... He doesn't belong to David. If we have to follow this logic, he doesn't come from the seed of David at all. How could he come from the seed of David if we follow the line of, you know, his blood, 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 because the seed, which, which seed came through Jesus? He was created unique. So the Quran said, in, in the Masala Isa, in the Allah, Kamasali Adama, Halakahu Munturabin, Summa Kadalahu Kumbayakun. The similes of Jesus is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, and he said, be, and he become. So if 
at all somebody have to worship adam need to be worshiped then adam is supposed to be worshiped then because he didn't have to go through a human being in womb he didn't have to nine months and all this menstruation and then he didn't have to be born and then he grew this is wonderful god made him and he became human this is more mysterious adam no mother no father deserve to be worshiped if father because she came from the human the With father, no mother, you and I, mother and father, Jesus, no father. This is the creation of Allah. He created, He created as He wills. So don't let this take you away from the fact you can't worship God, God Almighty, true human being, true form. You worship the unseen God. All right. So we're going to go ahead and give you a chance to ask questions, and we will try to the best of our ability to give you logical and intelligent answers so I'd like to first of all ask that you hopefully that will you know meet your satisfaction and then we'll just continue on until everybody that has a chance has an opportunity to ask okay so any one of you that want to start if you'll do me a favor if you have a question if you will raise your hand or at least stand and then ask your question and then uh, speak loudly please yeah, and you don't have to necessarily stand if you want to sit that's fine but just speak loudly so we can all hear okay Unless it's indicating personal spirit person a person I said earlier that Christ is God or anything else of God's will without the Holy Spirit revealing that. Any other questions? Uh, but I'm, I'm here first. Okay. Yes. Um, the title of the debate was The Authenticity of Christianity, The Authenticity of Islam. The Origin? The, the origin. origin. And Authenticity, Our Muslim Community. Authenticity and the Origin for a long time, and I see we're still pretty much looking for an answer. I want to ask, and with that, I want to ask, you quote John 1.1, 1, 1, and there's a question to both of you guys. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and so on and so forth. From my understanding, I heard, for one, this is John speaking, not Jesus saying, I was the Word, I was in the beginning, but philosophy that John himself copied from other texts, Greek philosophy, I don't know the scholar or the Greek philosophers, but if you can expound on that, if you know of that, or Ahmed, please. About the expounding? About the statement itself, which uh, John took or plagiarized this from Greek philosophy. In the word, in the beginning was the word. Okay. The word was God. The word became God, and so on and so forth. And if you can, there is a play of Greek words between what is God and what's not God, or what's divine. Okay. I think Ahmed know about this. Okay. If you can expound on this phrase, in the okay. beginning was, which Christians now take as the cornerstone of their belief, saying God or Jesus was in the beginning, and he's always been here, hence he is God. Okay. I claim it being As I understand it, long before the philosophical activity took place that you're speaking of, long before that, this was noted according to the Greek, according to the Greek, okay? So that means that it had to come from a different source. It did not come from philosophy, but philosophy says a lot of things, okay? There are a lot of documentation out here in the world that has proliferated proliferated the horizon in terms of humanity's horizon as far as literary why I said believe not every spirit that's why the scripture says believe not every spirit every person because every person is not credible their sources may not be credible this person you say claims John wrote this how do we know that that is true what is the documentation or the evidence of this. There's early you need Greek texts that say it was uh, okay. a, a, a big statement of philosophy. Okay. It, it may have been a 
quotation. Yeah, and it may have been many statements out there because many people have... So there are, and I might say this as well, when it comes to Shaitan, Shaitan is very cunning. He creates counterfeits because he knows that there will be a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. The question is, who is filling that righteousness? Be, you know, be continuous to fulfill, you fulfill. You said, okay, okay, now in the beginning, you said, God. Longer is doing sacrifices now. <coughs> you know, we're no longer doing that. You know, okay, now, what, what's, what's going on with that? You okay, now Christ came and uh, he said that Peter said, or what one of them says that, uh, you know, that we're not supposed to do the, the, do the circumcisions anymore. You understand? Okay, now the thing, the thing about that is that, you see, what happened is that, you see, when, like I said, that, you know, when he comes, I will fulfill the law. He fulfilled, he's a fulfillment of all those laws. That's why we no longer do it. I said, okay, the question that I wanted to ask is, I'm going to let you, you know, find that way. But the question that I really want to find out is, uh, you know, okay, now, our religion, you understand, our beliefs, our way of life, you see, is coming from where, where God is, is trying to get us back to a certain place. You see, so the thing about it is that according to our scripture saying about the kingdom of God, you see, with angels and men for eternity, that's where we're going. You understand? So, uh, that's what we're doing. What you just said, with all due respect, these are your own words. What you just said is your own understanding. I'm, I'm talking about what Jesus actually said. If we could analyze what Jesus To what others say, what others say. If we can stick to the, what Jesus said, there will be no problem. It's always about what somebody else said. But Jesus himself said, the master is greater than the servant. So I'm not talking about what Paul said. Or Just real quick, read from what you said earlier about the world. His opinion might be different of God as yours based on how we were raised. I think this is why the Creator to describe himself uh, most accurately as a uh, It's our God now. So your confusion, or maybe possibly his confusion, there won't be any confusion. Let's refer back to Abraham, and let's see what he said about God, and who did he worship, and how did he worship. His religion, our religion now. The same religion that Jesus brought, just a comment. You said that God is perfect. from God was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these authors, not prophets, were they inspired directly from God? We as Muslims, we say no. But, you say in the book of Timothy, there needs to be a reproof of doctrine. We say God's word itself, from the first letter until the last letter, is flawless and perfect. I didn't say reproof of doctrine. What I I said, First Timothy says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Read it for yourself, yes. and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction. We say the final revelation, what we call the Quran, to be perfect. Okay. Point point being that earlier Sheikh Ahmed said King James version, mm -hmm. the third version. They said they found so many grave defects. Who said that? Well, this is the scholars who revised it, and every Bible that has been revised after. I think what the brother's point, as he was trying to say earlier, was if we had an original to go to, of we can go to it and derive it and find the most perfect form of it, or it itself should be perfect. Who are these but guys? King James came with his version, mm -hmm. new revised version, so many different versions. Why? Because for one, there is no original to draw from. The original scriptures that they've been digging up and so many and so forth, over 20,000 of them. 
None of them completely, wholeheartedly, word for word, in agreements with each other. Generally just saying the same thing. So generally, we can generally get a gist. with no generality, but direct detail for us so we don't have to be misguided. Mm -hmm. And there will be no room for misguidance. King James, I offer this as proof, and it's very simple. So many Christians and Christian preachers and pastors use this for proof and say, well, we go by the King James Version. But so many scholars, scholars, not just mere men like me and you, I mean true scholars mm -hmm. who have studied this in its original Greek, which is nothing near, uh, but like slang. We don't believe God speaks in slang either. But near slang, they studied this <laughs> original Greek. And they said, wait, 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 it doesn't say this, it says this. King James Version, uh, 1 John 5, 7, one, one time it was there. Scholars later said, no, in the original text it's not there. We take it out and we throw it away. Who are these men? If God's word is perfect and you're saying it's the Bible, who are these men? Uh, you said scholars compilation. Who are these scholars to take God's word, pick it apart, throw it away, or add it when they want to, if God's word is perfect? If I can respond to that, first of all, I did not say that it was a scholarly compilation. Don't put words in my mouth. What I did say is that you have over oh, Reader's Digest, excuse me, I'm sorry. You okay. quoted from Reader's Digest. I quoted. I see, okay, let's get it all straight. Yes. Okay, because when you say these things, make sure you know what you're talking about. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that goes the same with what I say. Okay, and if I say something, I need to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Okay, the same goes for me as well. So, quick, okay. Um, is the Bible the only authentic word of God according to your book? According to scripture. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about in regards to what... Do you I mean, accept it? Yeah. Do you I accept, accept the Bible it? in its entirety as the Word of God? I accept everything of the testimony in the Scripture as the Word of God. Okay, that, that's... All, the all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, so I accept that. Okay, let me, let me, let me ask that a different way. Um, is there a difference between revealed Word and inspired Word? Depends on the, from the source. Depends okay, on the source. There, there can... Okay. Let me say, okay, let me, could be the same thing, brother. Okay, but well, okay, let me say it like this. I don't. I really couldn't. Um, is every book that's in the Bible wrote down by someone who was directly inspired by God? Is that a better way to answer? So every author of every book in the Bible were they directly inspired by God? To the angels of Lear to write down God's revelation. I said like that. Okay, now it sounds like that's a trick question. No, it's not a trick question. No, 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 no. the angel of your Okay, let me say it like this then. Let me let me cut to the chase. Is every book in the Bible directly revealed by God? Yeah. In terms of the testimony, yeah. None, none of them. There, there can be no. I mean, so what I'm saying is, every if every book in the Bible is revealed by God, then that means it comes from. One unchangeable source, correct? Well, I think we have to we have to add something to that. Well, can you ask that question? Because, and I say it's trick in the sense that you're trying to say that it is inspired by God. That means that man has nothing to do with it. You're no, no, no. Okay, okay. Let me say it like this. I don't really, because as Muslims, we we cut to the chase. We'll tell everybody. Quran is revealed by Allah. That's it. There is no intermediary, no nothing. It is revealed. Okay. So let me say it like this. Is every book in the Bible revealed, came directly from God? Like the scripture says, all scripture is inspired by God. Okay, so, so, inspiration. Every, so, so I can take that as a yes. No, take it as the scripture says. <laughs> the reason why I say that, and I don't mean any disrespect, I don't mean no disrespect to what you're saying, okay? For inspiration involves not only what God is saying, to someone else, but it also involves the individual he's saying it to as far as their free will, as far as their willingness to be a participant in the process of the declaration of what is being revealed. So you cannot, in the scripture, as far as the Bible is concerned, I cannot 
just take the scripture and assume like a regular book of humanity that it is going to be established in the same way. It can't be done that way. But that may be the way people approach it and that's why many people misunderstand it because they try to approach it from the same perspective as humans write books. It doesn't work that way. Okay, okay, but see. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع في